Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 18, 18 of Red Pill Tamales. We whipped up a fresh batch of tamales. This is an emergency batch. There's a lot to talk about. They're trying to censor these tamales. They're trying to deep platform these tamales. That is why our patrons are super important because y'all keep us with a platform. Y'all keep us with a voice. And we are broadcasting live from the freest country in the world, United States of America, where we have freedom of speech. <clears throat> with an asterisk, right? Well, you have freedom of speech up until a big company says you no longer don't. The exceptions for freedom of speech are usually don't yell fire in a crowded theater because you're going to incite someone getting hurt. You know, they're going to trample and people are going to try to escape. A br- you can't yell fire in a burning theater. Now you, you got to add to the list. Now you can't question certain things. You can't critique certain things. So, hey, man. It's just different ways to look at it. And, um, you know, like I said, man, shout out to the patrons. Thank you for the support. I, I'm not even sure how many patrons we're up to right now, but that don't matter. We got some merch coming. Um, the movement is growing. And all we really want to do is enrich the discussion. I know we haven't had no Democrats on here debating me on immigration, stuff like that. So please forgive us. Um, you know, we getting the show off the ground. This isn't this isn't MSNBC, CNN, Fox News. This ain't OAN. We just all right. Look, we just I'm a comedian, so be careful. Don't pick apart every little thing and try not to misinterpret. I'm just trying to be helpful. Really, I just want to have fun, talk shit, maybe crack some jokes. Hundred percent. But I've gotten a lot of feedback from people I love and respect where they totally misinterpret what i'm trying to say and uh, i really need to work on my communication skills because they will find a way i might say something about serotonin or or and it's like oh but you know i suffer from i, I think you being mean a certain group you know i might say i might crack a joke about you know beta males da, 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 and it might turn into like well what's up with this alpha chauvinistic what is all this rhetoric you're put what's this toxic energy you know what i'm saying um even on my social media some people i love and respect look up to they'll be like you really don't want discourse because it it seems to me that you are promoting violence and you are trying to shut others up and why are you blocking people and deleting comments you know it seems like you're the censorer you know (laughs) practice what you preach and uh stuff about like you come at people like you're smarter than them like like you're calling them dumb i was like whoa 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 what lines are you reading in between? Because, I mean, shit, you're just reading text. You're just reading a comment. Yeah. I might put a question mark. I might have commas in there. I rarely do all caps and exclamations. <laughs> but with that being said, it's the Red Pill Tamales. I'm your boy, Chingo Bling. We have producer Rob. What's up, everybody? That's a good intro. I like the way you kind of set the landscape, you know, here. Well, at the end of the day, man, let's just begin with stuff we can all agree upon. For you sure. Know? Rob, I'm speaking for Rob and myself. We're not hateful people. We're not judgmental. Uh, we're liberal in a lot of ways. We're progressive in a ton of ways. But we're also conservative in a lot of ways. And, you know, speaking for Rob again, and I'll let you chime in, Rob, but I feel that what it, real, what it really boils down to is we love freedom. We love America. We love discourse. We love freedom of speech. Um you know, so that's really what we're here for. We want to talk about stuff like censorship and big tech. You know, have they gotten too much power? What about antitrust laws? Are they monopolies? You know, is it just free market? And they're just kind of, you know, you know, Chingo, when you log on to these websites, bro, they have terms and conditions. God. And if you violate them, they are a company, you know. So people want to point out hypocrisy left and right. Like, for example, all the Democrats that were inciting violence. That's how I saw it. Right. And I have a clip that I want to post. Uh, and I'm going to caption it as they are not inciting violence. They're speaking truth to power. And just let all my red pill tamales people get mad at me and let other people be like, you're being a smart ass. You're just being sarcastic. <laughs> but Fuck, it's, a, it's a crazy world we're living in, man. It's, it's kind of Orwellian. Uh, take that as you will. Um, obviously, surveillance, uh, you know, stuff that. Snow, Edward Snowden was a uh, whistleblowing about, you know, they they spying on us, they and maybe on other countries too, but mainly us. Yeah. Um. The you know 
there's propaganda that maybe our intelligence agencies use in other countries to destabilize them and kind of influence their elections and maybe help put in a regime that's more favorable for what we want. Mm -hmm. But it seems like it's being weaponized against us. And that's just my opinion. I'm not here trying to call nobody dumb. I'm not trying to like hurt nobody's feelings. I'm not trying to put out no toxic alpha. Ma- I just be joking around. I just, sometimes I'm high when I do this. <laughs> I really just want to have fun with the shit. But honestly, the first 15 episodes, I'm on defense mode. Yeah. Because I'm having to defend myself because nobody's cutting me no slack. Nobody's wanting to listen to, they just want to say, up, oh, extremist, uh, you know, radical lie, uh, conspiracy. It's like, no, 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 no. There are some things that we will <laughs> preface and say, all right, we don't know what the sources are on this. This shit don't may not even it's interesting, but it may not even come true. Like all this crazy Lynn Wood stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of the feedback I got from some people I know and respect is what the hell are you doing? One minute you touching on some kind of conspiracy. The next minute you talking about some little book you read. So I get it, you read a book and you a conspiracy like (laughs) God damn, let me just be a comedian and talk shit. But the clubs are closed. College Station, January 14th and the 15th. We will be at Southern's Chingo Blingo featuring Jesse Payton. We got uh, my boy uh, Jesse. Um, no, no, no. Israel Garcia is on that one. And then we hit Florida, another red state. Mm. We got Naples, Florida coming up February 10th, I believe. And then West Palm Beach. That's a big club. The West Palm Improv, February 11th, where I will just, it's the Freedom of Speech Tour. I, I like to, it. I like I, it. I had to call it that. I don't know how many dates are going to fall under that title. But at the moment, to me, that's the biggest story. I don't care if you call yourself Democrat, Libertarian, Anarchist. I don't give a damn what you identify as. I pray for your free speech. Yeah. Like like the dude, Lalo, the, Mm -hmm. the comic. I sent him a tweet. I tagged him. I was like, hey, man, we might disagree on some things. And I retweeted a thing where he was criticizing Trump. I was like, I fully back your right to free speech and critique our government and talk shit about, you know, like shit. Everybody else could have, I have a clip in my phone where it's like Kathy Griffin holding up the head and, oh, yeah, you know, that. it's, it's everybody saying people need to get punched in the face. And, uh, Robert De Niro, I just want to punch him in the face. Oh yeah. And, and a uh, compilation. And, yeah. And Johnny Depp saying, um, When's the last time an actor assassinated a president? And Madonna saying, I have been thinking long and hard about blowing up the White House. And I'm like, Jesus. While she was in D.C., actually. I'm like, bro, ain't nobody calling them out. But they want to make everybody else that doesn't necessarily agree with them, they want to lump us all together. They want to say, Rob, you were responsible for promoting whatever it is you promote. And you were inciting these people to run up in there like some idiots. Did nobody ever say, run up in there like some idiots? No. So no, no one expected that. But everybody's leaving me comments, and that's why I'm on defense mode. Yeah. And you might not be getting the crazy funny, you know, chingo bling, talking shit. Ha, 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 let's make fun of all these topics. It's like, no, you're getting concerned, 41-year-old chingo bling, that's on defense. Yeah. I'm having to fucking justify every little thing that's in the background of my set. You see what I'm saying? So for the first however many episodes... Hopefully after my little rant, we can just have fun and go through these like these topics that are important. Yeah. Like big tech and censorship and, and, and hypocrisy and your freedom of speech, your right as an American to talk shit and to, to critique and to disagree and not get cut off from banking platforms, not get kicked off of Stripe and PayPal and all communication platforms. Well, if you don't like it, start your own app. Well, some motherfuckers did, and they getting kicked off. The servers. They, they, they figuring out a way to just kill their competition, which I, I believe I might have some stock in Twitter around here somewhere. I don't know. I might own some stock, you know, in this hey, little stash app. Okay. I don't know. But I'm saying they're able to kill off their competition. So why not <laughs> get you some stock? Yeah. Um, again, this is not stock advice. I'm just a stand-up comedian. Don't listen to me. I love how high you're coming in this morning. I mean, it's my rant because, I mean, Jesus Christ, people just want to not be tolerant, not listen, and instantly lump you in with a red Tifa and, and say that somehow, some way, 
everybody that's not AOC is somehow complicit. It's like, come on, bro. You cannot lump everybody together. Get the hell out of here, man. 74 million people? Come on. No mames, cabrón. Like, you can't say, oh, uh, what, uh, you know, Newsmax. Newsmax is complicit because they said we need to fight for our country. What do you mean by fight? Bitch, you gonna ban the word fight? Fight can't mean I'm gonna write a letter to my congressman. Fight can't mean I'm a peacefully march or protest. Damn. It's like the hypocrisy is blaring and we can't even talk about it out of fear of being deplatformed, censored, labeled a fucking cuckoo, a little crackhead and shit. Oh, orale. People, oh yeah, these homies in Texas must be smoking some mean glass out there, homie. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Bitch, just because I care about the motherfucking constitution and freedom of speech? I'm not allowed to be American. You got to keep me in this identity politics crap. I have to, no matter what. But your roots is what makes you, I say, your heritage. Mexico don't give a damn about you or me, Rob. Yeah. I mean, shit. When Mexico plays the U.S., I might wear both flags, both colors. And then, wait, chingatelo. Hey, wait, block it, kick it. Hell yeah. I don't even know shit about soccer. But I know that's coming. Anytime Mexico plays the U.S., they're going to be looking at me. Chingo, it's time for you to choose your gente. And it's like, are we not a, are we is it no longer cool to promote basic American fundamental values like freedom of speech? I can't even believe we even have in this debate. And it's just starting too. And just call me whatever you want. Call me a coconut, call me a sellout. But you're gonna look back at this shit and remember, after you lose your motherfucking rights, you're gonna look back at this video like, man, Chingo kept saying, like, man, it's not about left or right, man. It's about how they're gonna use all this against all of us. Con ese pinche desmadre, the little, the little show they want to do and run up in there. Again, I know a lot of people on the left are like, oh. They're just going to blame it on Antifa. There were zero Antifa there, guys. <laughs> Antifa isn't even a thing. It, it, they're just in Portland. Nah, bitch. It, it's not a stretch of an imagination to say, perhaps there were provocateurs mixed in. How hard is it to throw on a MAGA hat and break a window? Right. Now, I'm not saying it, it, there ain't no extremists on the right. There's extremists on both sides. But I'm not going to call... All of you guys on the left, extremists. Just like you shouldn't call Rob and I extremists. We somewhere in the middle. 100%. Yeah, man, I, all I did was you know, wake up when I was young and feed the fucking cattle and grow up in a different lifestyle than a lot of other people that might be listening to this. But that doesn't mean we're extremists by any means. Nah, I don't think they they would look at you as extremists because <laughs> you, you're a farm boy. Yeah. Well, some would. Some would. Absolutely would. I guess... Th- because we grew up with guns and hunting and all that's that was like oh you're extreme you're some, automatically an extremist some people get so br- uh, i don't want to use the word brainwash because it's going to sound judgmental i know they're going to say chingo is it possible that maybe you are brainwashed yes we are all biased we are all brainwashed from the time we're born we are socialized you pledge of allegiance to the flag because we have to brainwash our young that we are a nation and that we're on the same motherfucking team some of y'all don't know what team y'all on y'all acting like where do you live are you moving i think uh i think communism's a good idea bitch pack your bags (laughs) pack your bags so i'm just gonna i'm just that's it ain't no more filter dog like i'm tiptoeing around like oh this might come across as i don't say alpha <laughs> That's the still thumbnail for sure. Yeah, somebody was like, um, I took it personal when you said something about people with anxiety and they're weak and what? Depression, something about serotonin, beta male. I suffer from anxiety. Mm-hmm. I don't know what all kind of mental health and shit I got. Yeah. We all have trauma. And I, I remember on one of the uh the clips we posted, it was about cut people some slack. People be having trauma. Mm-hmm. And I, and then I was just riffing, talking shit, saying, you probably got doo-doo stains in your drawers, little boy. Leave. I'm talking about people that leave stupid comments, and I have to be patient with them because I don't know how they're interpreting me. So again, here we are, episode number 18, and I'm still on defense. Yeah. I can't even get into the important shit because I feel attacked. I can't express myself without offending somebody. Like, for example, you're talking about hunting. 
some people on the left won't look into the debate about hunting. Well, what are some good things about hunting? Maybe there's too much deer in some areas and it's turning into vermin. They 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 doing too much. They overpopulating. They don't have enough predators. And people got to come in and take care of these wild hogs. Yeah, that's or, a big problem in Texas. You know what I'm saying? And people just want to take the the easy route, the mainstream route of ugh, it's heartless. It's like actually if you look into <clears throat> both sides of the argument, it is arguable that you know hunting the animal is more what's the word empathetic what's the word uh yeah i can use empathetic i forget the word humane though. yeah is the more humane way to convert these animals into food yeah versus mass produced they're just stressed they can't move it's dirty conditions they put them on a conveyor and then the rest you really don't want to know because it's a lot of mexican immigrants working in there trying to make some money and it's, it's dangerous conditions. It's it's nasty for the people that work there. We eating some nasty ass meat. So you might be on the nasty side of yeah. the argument. <laughs> yeah. We don't all have the luxury of go hunting, but. No, it, you know, it's you brought up a bunch of good points. You brought up points I didn't even have on today's notes, but I'm glad you did. And I don't even know where to start from here. Like, what? Bert, first, let me just ask before we even get to any of the topics. Know, right? What brought about this very genuine speech at the beginning? Well, because people that I look up to respect appreciate work with have have uh, asked for advice I, I look to them for things people that i really care about misinterpret who i am mm. people that know me somehow think i, I saw something in the back I, I think that was a little piece of a trump flag yeah somebody gave me a trump bumper sticker and we just we set it aside i didn't even know it was in the shot yeah like we've said it multiple times before I'm an America crusader. I'm a freedom crusader. I'm not a Donald Trump crusader. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, if some of these people listen, to, they might find it odd. They're like, well, why didn't he just... Because sometimes we, we can't have a discussion. People want to just interpret things how they want. And these are people that know me. And they just heard something else. They heard all negative. All they heard was, I'm somehow putting out negative things like i'm it's it's all bad it's mean it's mean-spirited it's judgmental i'm i'm um, i'm intolerant i'm not listening it's like okay so let's just start this is a good place to start <laughs> okay Rob. yeah a good place to start is let's talk about just even for 30 seconds before we get into the list stuff we can all agree on i think I, i'll just make mine brief and i'll let you go I think we all want like safe communities where our kids can get a decent education and thrive and and you know there's jobs, crime ain't too crazy. Um you can go out and work and enjoy yourself and and provide for your family and and lead a healthy life. And you choose your values. If you don't want to go to church every Sunday, that's fine, you know? Live how you want to live, but at least have some rights and some freedom and people don't I think we all want to live an American life where people aren't all up in your mix. They're not all up in your business. They're not telling you what to do. They're not judging you. They're not all up in your house trying to see what the fuck's going on and, and judging and calling names and, you know. I mean, you, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's literally, you would think everybody wants those things, right? But here's this, here's this COVID world that we're living in right now. And pre-COVID, a lot of the people that are raising an uproar on online like maybe their hobbies, hypothetically here, were blogging, you know, keeping up with the cheese maybe traveling when they have some time. Yeah, we were spoiled. We were spoiled. Very spoiled, right? But on the other side of that, the people that didn't want to pay attention to the cheese and travel and have all these, you know, trips with friends were building a business and building a family and going to church and doing these kind of hobbies. But now they can't do those things. But you could still be at home and you could still keep up with the cheese and now you can't travel. So now they're really hyper politically involved all of a sudden and want to just interpret those things as okay that's you why do you want to go out and work why do you want to go and build your business why do you have to be inside of a church why do you mm -hmm. now it's like that's wrong all of a sudden because they can't do what they want to do yeah it turns into a you're part of the problem type of conversation yeah and america we are so divided there's a debate on everything everything there's just a debate on if you know 
Well, too bad, so sad if you have a small business. You know, we can't kill grandma, right? Right. Obviously, nobody wants to kill grandma, but even Governor Cuomo, uh, Democrat New York governor, is now starting to sound like Trump. If you just put your thumb over the name and read the tweet, you would think it's Trump. Bro, did you see the one from today? The one that was like, we can't. Or yesterday. We can't stay locked down forever. Yes. Duh, motherfucker. Taking you, took you nine, ten months to say that? Especially New York City. You can indoor dining in a in a... One of the coldest places in America. If you would, that's a good. If you just covered the the name and read the tweet, people would have thought that was a Trump tweet. And if, if he was still allowed to be on Twitter. If you read somebody, or if you heard some of these videos from Maxine Waters and Pelosi and all these people, Kamala saying the protest will not stop. There will be violence. You know, uh, this is an expression of whoop de whoop de whoop. People are frustrated. They're gonna take it to the streets, get in their face. You know, yeah. When they go high, we kick them. All these. Oh, when they go low, we kick them. <laughs> All these things. If you literally just read it, you would think, oh, my God. Who did Trump? This sounds like inciting violence. Yeah, it sounds like, is this. this what Trump said when he incited? No wonder we had somebody storm the Capitol. Yeah, and then you look at it, and it's like, oh, no, that was all, again, I don't want to say there are no bad Republicans. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of full of shit Republicans. Yeah, so most of them. Don't maybe misconstrue what I'm trying to say and just be like, Red pill tamales is stupid because Chingo just gets on there and talks shit about Democrats because they don't agree with him for an hour. He just <laughs> talks shit about Democrats and he hates Nancy Pelosi and he doesn't want to have a conversation. No, it's these people are hypocrites. Yeah. There's Republican hypocrites too. Yeah, we didn't praise Mitch McConnell when he kept blocking stimulus after the fact, even though Democrats blocked it first, right? There's still no praising Mitch McConnell either way because he didn't, he didn't speak for the people. He didn't put things up for vote for the people, right? And we also don't praise... Every single little thing Donald Trump does. Absolutely not. It's just, I see what he's up against. And I kind of see what he was, in my opinion, what he was trying to do. All the good stuff he got done in this in the term is going to get forgotten, overshadowed over this regrettable moment yeah. of him being up there talking and not having the sense to process... Oh, when I'm saying we're going to march peacefully and we're going to fight back for our country. He didn't know. He didn't process. This is what he fucked up. He didn't know that some motherfuckers are going to perceive it different. They're just, I don't know what, maybe they heard we're going to march down there peacefully. Maybe they heard we're going to tear some shit up. I don't know. Maybe that's where he fucked up is when you have a lot of people like this. There's going to be a certain percentage that may not hear you. They're going to hear what they want to hear. They're, they're just gonna, bad apples. Yeah, or provocateurs. Or yep. They're just going to project what they want. Or they're going to do what they want. They're going to do what they wanted to do regardless. So, you know, I put that out there too on my Twitter mm. saying Trump at the one yard line, la cago. Like he was about to be done. He had all these peace treaties. You know, he did the best he could with the economy in the middle of this pandemic. So on and so forth. All these good things, down the toilet, gone. And then people who stuck their neck out for him, like myself. Like Scott Adams. Yeah, yeah. Who wanted to kind of show the other side. Like, hey guys, if you kind of learn how to filter out the BS of the mainstream media, you might actually feel some of the stuff he's trying to say. Like, America first. Everybody was on some America first shit when they saw how much trillions of dollars, how many trillions... We're going to these other countries. Everybody was like, oh, wait a minute. What about us? What do you mean we only get 600? Right. Everybody turned into a Trumper. And before we even get, get too past that point <laughs> yeah. that you just made where he was up there speaking to his you know, crowd mm -hmm. of people, Alex Jones said around a million. Some people have recorded half a million or whatever. Okay, a lot of people, a couple hundred thousand to a million people. What he was doing and what Congress was doing was all part of the Constitution. It was all constitutional. When you hear Arnold Schwarzenegger, did you hear his video? Man, I, I Donald yelled, Trump. I yelled in my car. Donald Trump was trying to overturn the election. It was all constitutional. He wasn't trying to overturn. He was following the con And if everybody in America would have just let the process take place, it, this none of this would be an issue. He was taking every legal recourse. And this goes to the people, and I say this, and I brought it up for the people that you just mentioned or even that I've been mentioning in the past that are friends, family, close ones, mm -hmm. that don't necessarily get that, hear that, understand that, or don't want to. But mm -hmm. it was all part of the constitutional process to validate and make sure that everything was yeah. true and real. And it's not the first time. No, it's, not it's the happened first dozens time. and dozens it's of times. It's not even the first time. And it just, it really, 
rubs people the wrong way, it starts to seem real fishy. I mean, I know tr- Trump tweets weird shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that could get misinterpreted. But it starts to f- rub people the wrong way, and it gets real fishy when it's like, okay, they're trying to lump us all together. They're threatening to get people fired, deplatform, kicked off of social media, kicked off of banking. What you going to do? Just Bitcoin your way through life? <laughs> you can't fly nowhere. You know, that's, I think the no fly list shit was for people that were like all up in the mix, you know, arguably. But in the midst of all that, they're like, damn, to me, it seems like they censoring the president. The left sees it as, oh, thank God, shut him up already. Yeah. It only took four it's years. It's just so much noise coming from that man. It's like... Big tech is only getting stronger. It's only getting bigger. It's a monopoly. They're killing off their competition. They're not playing fair. They getting richer. And they and you have I told my daughter, she's 12. I said, um, it was January 7th. And it was the sixth Six, when they kick yeah. them off. I said, Oh, hey, sweetheart, by the way, when they teach you at school that we have freedom of speech, we kind of do, but we kind of don't. So I just want you to know. We had freedom of speech as of January 6th. And I know some people are like, oh, Chingo, take your L, bro. Chingo's still whining, trying to defend that he voted for Trump. This is bigger than that. I had to tell my 12-year-old, yes, you have freedom of speech up until a big company says you don't. And the reason I say that is, in today's society, modern communication it's social media. So if you oust someone from all, however many of 12, you know, they banned Trump from Spotify, Pinterest. This motherfucker can't post cupcake recipes. <laughs> he can't listen to Chingo Bling, Versace Mariachi out now. He can't start a Shopify store. <laughs> it's like, man, he's got to do like a dope dealer. Like, man, that shit right there in my grandbaby's name. You know, that shit in my mama's name. Like, he got to have shit in everybody else's name. And now... The PGA won't let the Trump family put the name. It's like all that over a couple of people that you haven't even really figured out. Sure, there's the guy with the horns. I think they said he was a what they what they figure out he was. I mean, extremist I kept hearing, QAnon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Q sent me here. And then there's a lot of people that no matter what I post, they they just like uh, what the Q said. <laughs> like Q said what? It's like bitch. I don't even. I have I don't even know about Q. I don't get on Q. I don't even know where to look up Q. And we could talk about misinformation and disinformation and and how QAnon really was. They say a lot of that shit was I, I don't know if it was they throw out they throw out the term Russian disinformation so much I know. that I feel weird even saying you it. You can't even use it anymore. Let's just say there was another country somehow manipulating folks that were foreign on foreign interference. That were on the fringes and somehow went down a weird rabbit hole and a lot of that shit just was not coming true it's like oh man at uh tonight you know emergency broadcast system you know and i'm like shit what are people texting me what do i do and ain't none of this shit coming true and it's like lynn wood said and it's like all right i think they was feeding lynn wood bullshit and then he's putting it out there i don't know great storytellers that's what i've said when i've been caught watching or reading some of that stuff i'm like man there's some of the greatest storytellers in the fucking world because they'll find a way to justify it like oh it's oh, great the blackout in pakistan's because general electric was being sold to china and you know all these aircraft war uh what you call airplanes and shit they use general electric motors and we can have china have that so trump's in the R- rgv right now he in the 956 because it's chinese troops on the border right now and i'm like hey man hit me back when the shit when <laughs> when you actually see trump down there at delia Tamales. When, when, when you see trump i'm like first of all if you go into war down there why would he be the one that why was why does he need to be in west like right now why does he need to be in mission just because hey man a lot of people saying man there's chinese troops down there and they on the canadian border too because they trying to ensure a peaceful transition and i was like man i'm turning my phone off bro where's the place we had the after party in mccallan uh <laughs> yeah it was downtown damn it was good yeah those are the homies too um Salud, uh, salud. I think it's salud. I think it was god damn it some of the best food i've ever yeah, had yeah life. it was dope man you can't go wrong with the valley 
but yeah, you're right, man. All the troop shit, uh, you know, on the border, Mexican border, Canadian border, they're in Maine, this, that, and the other. I'm like, all right, man, well, I guess we had a good run. Like, what the fuck is, uh, what are you saying? I don't see anything. I almost feel like the way war, uh, we talked about this last episode, it's not necessarily going to be boots on the ground. It's not necessarily going to be like, I don't know. I don't wish this shit upon us. No. But I feel like we are in a war and it's just covert. Yeah. That's the filter that I view the world in. It's like we, the citizens, are being blinded. They're pinning us against each other. They've destabilized us. The culture is changing. The economy is going to shit. Inflation's going up. We got a new regime. And, and meanwhile, everyone's so fucking confused, so fucking divided. We don't know what to believe. And other countries love it. They're like, yes, just keep feeding them. Shit from the left, shit from the yeah. right, extreme, destabilize them, debunk it, hoax it, hoax them to death. And they got the mainstream media doing 80% of the fucking work. Yeah. And that's why I'm mad. I sound like Rush Limbaugh in this bitch. <laughs> I'm mad as shit because you be trying to ring the bell and just kind of warn people, but they, they write you off. They don't want to hear it. Ugh, Chingo, why would CNN be lying to me? Why? Why, Rob? Explain it. They're our friends. Why? Like even the Cardi B clip, people took that shit the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, you gotta, you it's gotta like, get her high in order to understand Trump's politics. It's like, bro, y'all missed the point. First of all, I was just using her as an example. The point is this: Julian Assange, who maybe Trump should pardon before he resigns or whatever the fuck happens. Julian Assange. The reason they won't pardon him is because he knows. And I, I guess he's got all the detailed proof. And I, I need to look into this shit myself. But the statement is, all of the wars in the last 50 years were started due to fake news, a.k.a. propaganda. The reason is, average citizens don't want war. We want peace. Average citizens don't want to send their kids off to war. And, and we just don't even want that drama. But they got to convince us. You got to get people on your side. That's where the propaganda comes in. That's what Julian Assange was talking about. Julian Assange with the WikiLeaks, he was basically saying, all this shit is propaganda. They need it to feed the military industrial complex. These motherfuckers got bombs to sell. They got shit to blow up. They got oil to steal. It's a lot of death to be had. Oh, yeah. And the only way we could get y'all on board is a little bit of fake news. Now, I put that out there. And Chingo, get back to the jokes. Bitch, I got a comedy album coming. I hope you keep that same energy. I'm Chingo. on tour right now. I know. January 14th and 15th, College Station, Texas. Chingo, get back to the music. Stick to what you do. Have you heard the album? No. You're not even probably even fucking paying attention. So that's why I'm going to keep doing what the fuck I do. Don't worry about what the fuck I'm doing. It's all part of the master plan. That should just be your reply. Like, just copy and paste that. New album. Have you streamed it? On tour. Are you coming out? Yeah. Because you... And then they say, stop posting political stuff. Well, that's the shit that gets 600 comments. Yeah. It might be Happy New Year's for my family, two comments. <laughs> so you tell me what you want. Maybe it's the algorithm making y'all like that. It, it is. You know, you know it is. And there's some fun stuff that we can probably get into in future episodes when I, myself, and you do some research on how that stuff ranks. You know, how Instagram, or let's just use Facebook as an example, can can manipulate the amount of eyes something gets, you know, and then manipulate the amount of advertising it can then get from it and then repurpose it and do it over and over again. And they can hide stuff too, like the Hunter Biden laptop story, yeah. which no one fucking cares. No one cares that this family, while he was in office, was flying around to all these countries cutting deals. It, I, I posted the compilation clip of him just China, 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 it's great, China this, China that, China, China, China. Nobody's concerned. That the NBA is all china out. Yeah. Disney. Hollywood. Nobody fucking cares that the mainstream media is lying to your bitch ass. Treating you like a damn chump. And then LeBron James says, you know, we live in two different There's Americas. two Americas. And everybody's like, yeah, LeBron, you're right. Like, oh, all right. A, lot of, a lot of players said, it's all in how you frame it. It's all in how you view things. If you keep repeating. Now, you, no one can tell me. That if it were Black Lives Matter protesting the Capitol, we wouldn't have seen a very different treatment. Really? 
because uh Unc was it uncle hotep and hotep jesus they went viral with a clip where he was like biden why are you saying that he's yeah. like bro corporations would have jumped in and and did a slogan uh kaepernick would have got another 3.5 million dollar check from jack dorsey the ceo of twitter um basically what's happening is you i think tim pool said it where he's like it's a monolithic leftist uh culture where the media backs it up like it could be buildings on fire and it's like no that, that what are you talking about it was mostly peaceful the video of the, of the reporter saying that it's mostly peaceful while the fire rages behind him classic media and the average person that maybe hasn't been red pilled or isn't uh what's the word um uh, cynical of the media or, or yeah. dubious, whatever the fucking word is. Cynical is a good word. Like, you know, like my mom. I'll be chit-chatting with my mom on FaceTime and she'll be like, boy, that Trump, <laughs> he just don't want to leave and <laughs> and uh, what's up with that? Da -da 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 -da. And I'll just have to be patient. This is my mother. <laughs> she watches Univision and Telemundo all day. She believes everything Jorge Ramos says, the, the Mexican Anderson Cooper. And I just got to be like, oh, I don't know, mom. Like, I don't know. You know, I don't know. But I'll be trying to red pill her, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, mama. mama. Bling. No has oído Project Veritas, mamá. Tienen grabaciones de CNN, ma. <laughs> I wish we could record that. Her watching some Project Veritas videos. Or, or today, I'll, or next time, I'll be like, all right, guys, we have someone on here from the left. <laughs> uh, we have Mama Bling here. Hola, 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 como está? Hot sauce on sale now. Sí. Hola, hola. And then she'll get on here and just fucking spit some propaganda, some leftist shit. Comienza a rayar los disco. She's a little AOC. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's true, but I remember or just the other day people were saying that AOC said she might step away from politics. And it just it turns out to just be this like kind of grandstanding attempt at like just staying relevant right now. Like, I'm not really going anywhere. I'm just saying I might. I don't know. I mean, she's obviously very savvy. She's good at, uh, you know, playing the victim and spinning things and framing them in a way. But she gets called down on her hypocrisy all the time because yeah. she makes shit so extreme. Like, I forget who said it. They're like, uh, I think it was Ben Shapiro said, the left is going to turn the storming of the Capitol into their 9-11. Yeah. Where they're just going to turn it into like, we will not forget. Remember the insurrection that that evil orange man incited and people were like can you show me the part where he incited and it's like he was like we need to fight for our country and march peacefully and that mean that's he blinked it he tele you know he used telepathetic Tele telekinesis word. yeah all that shit he, <laughs> you know he blinked his eyes three times and that's white supremacy everything in america is racist uh to get back to what we actually said it right when we started this is it don't we all agree that everyone should agree that we want you know peace happiness you know life liberty and the pursuit of happiness right without being at each other's throat all mm -hmm. day every day mm -hmm. the media is not really and I, we have to keep saying the media because that's that's the best term or reference that we have like where are you consuming your stuff wherever you consume it at it's shifting your perspective Big of, time. of not only what's going on but of the people around you Mm. So you read the stories of what's going around around the country, around the world is one thing, but at the same time, it's simultaneously shifting your perspective and your idea of your neighbor, of your family, of your friends. You don't find that odd? Because I know you're listening. I know some of these people that are hating or sending, you know, hurtful or uh, sentimental that hurt my feelings kind of things are listening right now. What part of what we're saying is Sounds evil crazy. Yeah, or crazy? I think like what you were saying, like, do y'all not see how the media shapes narratives. And here's the scary part. How much tiptoeing and self-editing and self-suppression do we have to do? And be careful that we don't use the wrong word or oh, might imply something. It's like we literally walking on eggshells and I'm sure the left is like, well, Chingo, if you don't if you don't like YouTube's terms and conditions, maybe you should start your own platform. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking, but it's like that part should be scary to you that I have to uh, pick and choose how. Because I'm sure it's 50 clips just from this episode alone getting circulated out of context. Yeah. Somebody even left me that message one time. They were like, 
it, it was real weird. It, I think it was a Twitter thing, but they were like, um, do you back something, something, something. And I'm like, what? No. It's like, yeah, right. There are literally screenshots all over the internet. Is that a mosquito? Yeah. In the fucking winter? <laughs> Watch out with that, bro. Um, it, it threw me off. I was like, wait a minute. Am yeah. I being targeted? Is there some like dark corner of the internet where, because for one, somebody already tried to quote unquote dox me mm-hmm. where they tweeted out my address. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, I got some stocking stuffers for you right here. Yeah. If you pull up. Um, it's like, man, we can't even talk anymore. Yeah. The crazy I, part about that, too, is that, you know, people say the terms and conditions argument. I understand that. But before we even get to the part where you can say, okay, they kick them off, and then you go build your own app, and then you realize that Amazon has 66% of cloud server infrastructure around the world. Well, up, uh, guess I can't really do it because they control most of it. Microsoft controls another 8 10% of it, and then you have small little... Uh, independents that have some infrastructure where you wouldn't be able to build anything on anyway. So you really don't have anywhere else to go, right? Mm -hmm. So before we even start talking about that, you then go back to say, well, why can't we just have this this discourse around the world of it has free speech and people just kind of be cool, everybody. That's kind of my motto, my my phrase for 2021. Everybody be cool. Just Mm -hmm. be cool. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people say the terms and conditions and blah, blah, blah. What what makes you just immediately jump to that is my question. It's like, why Why is that the reply or the comment that people cut and paste? is like, well, they have terms and conditions. If you don't like it, you can leave. When they control more of the narrative and more of what people are consuming and how things are shaped, it goes beyond just their terms of conditions. I know they're a private business. I understand private business, but it goes beyond that. If you don't understand that it goes beyond them being a public entity or a private entity, rather, there's already something wrong with the way you're viewing things. So here's another argument. They say, Chingo. Just because that's not censorship. When Twitter kicks someone off, that's not censorship. Censorship is when it's the government telling you you can't say certain things. Okay, well, it is members of the government working with big tech in cahoots to silence you. So it's it's literally mostly Democrats in the government working with the Jack Dorseys of the world and all these people kind of in cahoots deciding what side they want to suppress, who they want to kick off, who they're going after, who they're uh, putting in Twitter jail. We've talked about this damn near every other episode. At nauseum. Every other episode. And it's just getting worse. I know I might sound paranoid, but do you want to live in a world where you have to say, I pledge allegiance to the official narrative? <laughs> um, I do not question blah, blah, blah. I do not criticize whoop de woo I do not stand against A, B, C, X, Y, Z. I officially go along with what is being issued to me by the state. Uh, a man and a woman. <laughs> I mean, do you want to live in that world? Well, you have to. I pledge allegiance to the official narrative. I will not go against or question anything. That is the basic fundamental of what the founding fathers but, but but then we'll be in a happier place, you know, because we'll all think the same. We'll all see the same things. We'll have the same ideas. And that'll or, be paradise. Yeah, it's not Orwellian at all. No, no. You don't sound like 1984 to me. <laughs> That's a perfect life. Uh, Maxine Waters and them, they weren't inciting violence. They were speaking truth to power, Rob. <laughs> it's different. When they say, you need to get in someone's face. You need to make people uncomfortable. You know, the protests will not stop. People are taken to the streets. That's not inciting violence. That's... AOC and them speaking truth to power, Rob. Now, when you say we're going to fight for our country and we're going to march peacefully, that's inciting riots. This is the Conan Sword. The Conan Sword. <laughs> Man, fuck Arnold. God damn it. I love Arnold Schwarzenegger too. And he's a Republican and people on top of all well, that, right? They say he won't like uh, uh, a No, he's hardcore. not an, established, an establishment uh, when he, when Republican. He was, when he was governor of Cali, they said yeah. he ran it a little bit more different I yeah because he i think he said you you know um this is probably two or three years ago he, I, I think he said trump wouldn't get my vote or it's hard to tell this is before because they go back to like the apprentice you know they go back mm-hmm. they've been they were friends they've been really good friends for a long time and i remember reading in an interview that arnold was like yeah i mean i mean donald would be friends you know he loved me he lo- he had the crush on me you know really weird, we're like a really weird interview and then, uh, you know, they had differences or whatever. And he's like, I might vote for, um, who was it? Uh, the chick from California. Uh, 
blonde, short hair, glasses. Kovlishar? No, what? the one that said she was Native American, but really oh, wasn't. Oh, uh, yeah, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, and it's like, oh, that's a weird choice, but okay. And then, you know, years later, he makes this video comparing what happened to this tragic, crazy event, you know, bur- you know, Jews and burning buildings and businesses. And it was just, it was so weird. I actually had, a, I've watched it three times. The just Proud to, Boys are like equivalent. Equivalent to the Nazi, yeah. Come on, do it. Uh, I had to watch it. And that's what I think some people should do with our clips or our content is rewatch it a few times and see what all you really get from it. Because I had the first time I saw it, I was like, there's no way that I just heard what I heard. I watched it a second time. You know, I can see what he's trying to do in a sense where he's trying to he is trying to like bring it down instead of putting lighter on the fire. But then you watch the whole thing. And it's like, well, you just put more lighter fluid on the fire, actually. I didn't even I, I couldn't watch it. I heard someone. I guess commentating about it, saying Arnold Schwarzenegger compared da, 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 to you know this, this, and that. He said how those people stormed the Capitol was equivalent to the thing in Germany where I think 30 million, I forget how many Jews were rounded up during that incident. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget what it was called, the crystal something like yeah, crystal arch or crystal. Yeah. Something. So Arnold, you're bringing up something where. Jews were literally rounded up and you're comparing it. That's why I, I yelled in my car. <laughs> yeah. When when I heard the commentary, they're like, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger compared. I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I was like one of them, like the liberal meme. <laughs> yeah. Like that. <laughs> the elections yeah, yeah, yeah. are free and clean. These are the cleanest elections. <laughs> That's how I was. I was like, shut the fuck up. This isn't helping. Arnold. Damn, Arnold. <laughs> I mean, I get it. We want to throw people under the bus and shit. He's probably like, oh, no, I'm Republican. I'm about to get rounded up and lumped together. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know what the fuck he was trying to do, but I was like, man, bro. Funny exit strategy. I'm not with him. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to throw people under the bus. I get it. But, But to compare to a different event where people were actually rounded up, you a hoe. <laughs> you a hoe in my book. Conan. 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 Yep. God damn it, Arnold. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's it. I really, I, if you saw it, you saw it. You can make your own. I mean, people that oppose anything that we've said and watched that will probably just chant and cheer for it, really. It's just kind of how lost I think they might be. Again, I'm just pro. I'm, I'm a freedom crusader. I'm an America crusader. I'm not a Republican crusader. I'm not up here fighting for a political party. Really, what I want to do is, what's the word? Um, this motherfucking word is escaping me. Think empower. Of, okay, yeah. I want to empower you guys with information. Empower. Because I feel that, um, I'll just pick on the Democratic Party. Let's just say both. I feel that politicians have taken advantage of us by keeping us uninformed. They're able to pull the wool over our eyes Every four years, either they're going to scapegoat us and the media is going to say immigrants are the, are the, you know, are the, are the responsibility. Y'all are the ones fucking up America or, you know, I just I don't know, man. I guess my question to people always is, too, is like, what is it that you want? <clears throat> what is it that you want? Who, me? No, 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 no. But not to, oh, I mean, man, maybe we the can you, talk about what you. we Yeah, the you, like the people that are, you know, like we were watching uh, a clip earlier and the guy was like, you know, let's. Burn this shit down. Fuck it. Fuck it John, all. John Sullivan. Yeah, the the Utah, you know, I forgot what group he's with, but he was one of the people that was recorded being there at the at the Capitol. Fucking shit up. Yeah, and he did an article with another publication where he was just like, I was just there to, to document everything, to show but, people but the he, truth. But he's left-wing extremist. 100%. So he's, he's pretty much kind of like Antifa, and he was up in the Capitol fucking shit up yeah literally saying we need to burn it down he, it was caught on tape he was the next so the next day if you guys don't know this look it up uh, john sullivan john his name. sullivan out of utah all of the times he's been arrested and let go uh all of the riots and all of the things that he's in you know uh, incited in the past let go every time yeah including every time. including the day that that happened at the capitol the next day uh, authorities had him for over an hour i think they said questioning him asking him things and then he did another interview with a newspaper publication kind of really contradicting a lot of stuff he said and then the videos came out of him saying got to burn it down you know you go over there do this this that and the other and it's just like fuck man like that's so dark and evil yeah terrible man um again hopefully people can 
hopefully this podcast can evolve to where we get to just riff and talk shit and not sound so angry. But it's frustrating that they're literally stripping you of your rights and people are just like, oh, really, Chingo, what rights have you lost? Leading up to the Capitol event, this, it, it was that. It was exactly what we wanted the podcast to be. We're mm -hmm. talking about real stuff. We're bringing light to interesting, good topics people need to hear about and learn about. And then that happens. You're like, ah, fuck. Now it's got to gotta take another turn back to the other direction, get a little bit more serious for a bit. Yeah, because everyone wanted to hit us with that. I told you so much. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you not see how Trump's been wrong all along? Yeah. Didn't you see this, Rob, four years ago when he came down the escalator? Didn't you know it would lead to this? AOC warned us. And it's like, no, this man thinks in his mind things were done unfairly, right? We got to put it in those terms before they get rid of the word unfair. Yeah. And he had all them people out there supporting him. Most of them, 99.9%, .9 cool, chilling, peaceful, just want to be present, or I don't know what. Now you got this little handful that did some fuck shit. And now I'm, now I'm getting text messages like, ah, turn on the TV, any channel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, first of all, what the fuck that shit got to do with me? I never told people run up nowhere. We've been consistent. We've been against riots. We've been against violence. You know? We're consistent. We're against riots. We're against violence and destruction of property, whether it's federal buildings or small businesses or, or streets in Minneapolis. Consistent. Meanwhile, they still burning up Portland. Ain't nobody mad at that. Can't talk about that, Rob. No. You, uh, 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 those those people, uh, Rob, that is Antifa, and they're out there positively burning buildings in the name of equality. That, God, really man. that that brings up uh this um this book so oh. so these white folk could go out there and burn shit up and y'all just turn the cheek it's all, cool all you cholos with keyboards are on the side of it see that's not fair right to lump people all together uh is it andy no i believe it was um there was a guy i saw some videos of the you know Antifa was protesting some star, not a Starbucks or Barnes and Noble. You know, some oh yeah, bookstore. yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want them to. They said they're going to show up every day until they stop selling Andy knows. Book. Yeah, do you remember what the book was? Because it, it doesn't come out till next month, but I know I want to grab it. Uh, it's something no. about um, Antifa. It's like the it was like a, like a deep inside look at Antifa and what it stands for and how it's trying to basically you know tear down America. Uh, and he has interviews with people who were once a part you know of the group and blah blah blah. But it's crazy. Like people are at this these business establishments. Stop selling any nose book. You know, we're gonna be here and we're gonna ruin your business basically every day until you stop or don't sell it or don't take pre-orders for it. So number one, you're trying to ruin a business. Mm -hmm. Number one. Two, you're on some book burning shit. You you're you wanna silence information. Uh three, y'all are extremists, and we're not allowed to say that. We're not allowed to say Antifa are leftist extremists. You say that these days, and they're like, ah, Chingo, Chingo, yeah. come on, man. What about Proud Boys? Okay, cool. But stop giving Antifa a pass. Yeah. Y'all lame as shit. Y'all lame as a motherfucker turning a blind eye to Antifa since the beginning. I'm, I'm just like, okay, so... Like people on Twitter, when I kept all my political talk strictly to Twitter, mm -hmm. people would twist themselves up into a pretzel trying to find ways to justify antifa um some some uh there's some dj homies here in houston that i'm cool with uh we were chatting about some stuff maybe we're talking about some kind of live stream event or something and somehow it came up and they're just like yeah we met with the local uh, antifa dude i was like <gasps> <laughs> and to them it was like nothing because to them they don't know these motherfuckers are extremists they're on the probably on some kind of terrorist watch list. If they doing contact tracing with your phone, you are, you in a van full of Antifa at some little protest for racial equality, boom, you fuck around, get lumped in with these assholes. Interesting. But a lot of people just don't even know. Like, they're just like, no, dude, it's anti-fascism. Like, there's a rapper that I booked at Chingo de Mayo two years ago that's like, pretty much is like, Antifa stands for anti-fascism. So yeah, fuck that, I'm Antifa. And I'm like, bro... You do not want to be Antifa, man. <laughs> I don't know what news channel you're watching. I don't know what country you live in. But to me, it's blatantly obvious. 
Antifa's on some fuck shit. Tell them Chingo said it. Uh, so the book is Unmasked, Andy No, uh, Inside Antifa's Radical Plan to Destroy Democracy, and it comes out February 2nd. So that'll be a read we both, I'm sure, will read and talk about on the podcast. There's one called The Red Famine. I need to order um, The Red Famine. I believe it has to do with, um, I want to say, like, Ukraine or some shit, like when communism started, like with all this Russian communism started to spread, and I don't know. Oh, Stalin's war on Ukraine? Yeah. Red famine? Okay. Yes. Interesting. I, uh, what's the name? Prager. Dennis Prager recommended it. And uh, let us know in the comments if you guys ever watch clips from uh, Prager U. Yeah. And, um, and tell us if you think they're insane or if they make sense yeah, to you. <laughs> or even like Candace Owens. I know a lot of people can't stand Candace Owens. Um, also, did you hear about Carrie Hilson, the singer? No. She had. A, do you remember her? She had a couple songs. She had one with Kanye. Yeah, okay. His name Carrie, sounds familiar. Carrie Hilson. She posted, when they banned Trump off of Twitter, she pretty much went on her social media and was like, hey guys, I know a lot of y'all hate Trump. It was very like, I don't care what side you're on, but this is America, and this should re this should raise a flag to everybody. And she was basically putting it out there for discussion, and she caught the backlash from Black Twitter. Mm. Basically, I'm sure she got caught all the coconut sellouts, Uncle Tom's, all that shit. I'm pretty sure they hit her with the book yeah. of insults, like they hit me with, because somehow, some way, if you defend Trump, even if it is. Trump's free speech and how it can affect you and your rights and your freedoms. Even though she was framing it as this will affect all of us. We have to pay attention to this. Oh, no. The left has been very good about the social engineering and really influencing the culture through media, through an official narrative, through Hollywood, through music, through sports, through everything to where poor little Carrie Hilson was just trying to bring up a point, and uh, she got she got attacked. People didn't want to hear it. No discussion. People don't want to hear it. Anything, I know Trump is probably the most polarizing figure of our day, of our time. That's why anytime he's mentioned, you're running the risk of getting canceled, boycotted, or called, or lump, or now, <laughs> After post uh, January 6th, you run the risk of being deplatformed, kick off of online banking apps, um, you know, so on and so forth. Pero pobrecita Carrie Hilson, she <laughs> just she wanted to speak up for your freedom of speech. And then you got bitch ass Borat. Oh my Sasha, God, Sasha Baron Cohen. Jeez. First of all, motherfucker, look here, Sasha Bowen. <laughs> this is America. I don't know what part of. Uh, motherfucking uk you came from but in america we don't promote censorship especially not if you a comedian borat this motherfucker man you a hoe borat you hopped on a computer talking about uh banning trump from twitter for a few days is not enough save democracy first of all shut the fuck up you from the uk I know he lives in L.A. He's, he's got like a production company. I, actually, one of my homeboys, I think, got a deal mm. through him. Very funny comedian. Uh, but Borat, you a hoe. <laughs> you are a hoe, Borat. And I have freedom of speech. I could call you a hoe still. Maybe not next year. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know where everything's going. But as of today, I could still call you a hoe. Because how dare you as a comedian. Oh, George Lopez retweeted him too. Oh, but I, I I got love for George. I don't want people to think this is like a Mexican thing, and I'm only mentioning him. Props to George for everything he's done for Latino comedians opening up doors. But you can't be a comedian and promote censorship. No, all this shit started with politically correct PC culture. That was the slippery slope. That's where it started. It sounded cool. PC. Hey, man, you can't say that anymore, brother. <laughs> hey, man, that's not PC. You know, hey, got to be politically correct now. And it slowly turned into where we are now, which is cancel culture, 
uh, big tech. We've given them more power than ever. Our antitrust laws, you know, their predatory practices. That's the conversation right now. And we've literally given all the power to these people that really don't want to unify. Biden and Kamala, they both gave, gave speeches after that January 6th bullshit. Instead of saying, hey, guys, we need to unite. We are one America. We need to chill out. Everybody be cool. Nope. You, you heard their speeches, right? From Ka Kamala, Kamala and Biden. I did not. Okay, let me just tell you and put your seatbelt on. Instead of them saying, everybody keep cool. It was an unfortunate event. We can't have that. We need to look forward. We need to build back better. Whatever. They should have kept it like that. In my opinion. Instead, what did they choose to do? Uh, we have two Americas, y'all. Because y'all know damn well that if it had been people of color doing all that, it would have been a lot different. And Joe Biden races ass. Excuse me. Am I going to get kicked off of that? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Google gods. Uh, I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the official narrative. I take it back. I do not question anything. I don't criticize anything. I don't want to get kicked off of banking platforms or communication platforms. A man and a woman. <laughs> but what they chose to do was say, there's two Americas. You can't tell me it wouldn't have been a different. People asking me in the comments, Chingo, how many people would have, it would have been dead if it had been people of color? Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe Kaepernick would have been out there getting a check. Maybe uh, Chase Bank or somebody would have gone out there and said, hey, you know, we stand with you. And then the NBA would have repainted their court. So I'm talking about we must storm the I don't know. <laughs> Y'all tell me. I'm just a comedian. College Station, January 14th, 15th. Naples, Florida, we coming. West Palm Beach, Florida, we coming. February 10th and 11th. Sass. I know it's because, uh, you know, the audience, obviously, it, they're, they're going through a, a transition period here uh, in the Chingo Bling verse, as, as I like to call it. Okay, let me know. Uh, the, you know, with what you talk about and stuff you even make fun of and, and podcast about. But it's uh, it's interesting, uh, like shows like History Hyenas. We had uh, Chris Stefano back, back way in the day on mm -hmm. What Did He Said? Yeah. And to see what they've done with History Hyenas, you know, they, mm. they're they really good New York comics. They talk about history on their podcast, and then they do just silly stuff as well in, in the midst of all that, like in, the, in between episodes or on those history-specific episodes, talk about Gandhi, Stalin, wars, whatever. But they're comedians at heart, right? New York comics, and their audiences aren't already, like, super left initially. They might be because they are from New York, but, like, Chris DiStefano did a video where he's, like, working out in a park. He's like, China took away my gyms, you know, whatever, whatever. And he's like... He says, well, Trump 2024. Yes, that's what I, that's why I brought yeah. it up. He's like, but we're going to come back better and stronger than ever. Like, Trump 2024, you know, he's like going and it's like, oh, that's the kind of shit you want to be able to do. Yeah, he, shout out to Chris DiStefano. I, I had the pleasure of working with him the first time when I was performing at Gotham Comedy Club. Um, I think that particular trip, we weren't able to bring any of our Texas comics. So, um, I never heard the story. Yeah, I think I hit up, I want to say I hit up Cypher Sounds. And I was like, hey, man, are you free? You know, let's work it out. And do you have somebody else you could bring? So it was Cypher Sounds, Chris Stefano, and myself. And it was a New York Mexican crowd. Wow. So these are Mexicans that are really New Yorkers. They're New Yorkers. So I'm having a hard time because I'm, I'm you know, I'm used to Mexican-Americans in the rest of the country i'm used to my midwest my south my west coast my southeast but the new york ones i'm just like uh so uh hey subways right damn it's cold god you damn know it. <laughs> pizza right huh <laughs> pizza so i just really i don't know i really and i was green i wasn't all the way seasoned yet and then i think cypher sounds and chris they were kind of thrown off too because they're just seeing a room full of Mexicans. And so they're like, okay, tacos, right? That's great. <laughs> I, hey, I did it a Latina once. Da, 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 da. And um, so, yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, Chris, uh, we had him on the What Did He Said? And, and we've seen their progression, uh, the New York comedy scene. Andrew Schultz says he's going to probably move his operation out of New York. Really? And they were joking on the podcast. They're like, Chris Stefano, you could be the king of New York now, bro. <laughs> I guess they have a little... A little inside joke over there. They do, yeah. About history hyenas and the, uh, what do they call it? Asshole army? Yeah, or asshole infantry yeah. or something like that? Asshole army. On the, the flagrant, flagrant too. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. Like I'm looking forward to like 
and to kind of segue into to a brighter subject is having the world open back up or having the United States open back up after all this is said and done. And <laughs> if if that happens, I'm being very hopeful hey man, here. From your mouth to, to God's ears. Being very optimistic here, like I like to be. But to see the, the scene come up, you know, I think more people have started podcasts or they have at least seen the importance of podcasts. Mm-hmm. So you can cross-pollinate creatively on stage and on a podcast mm-hmm. here the way that we see the coasts do it pretty well. Mm-hmm. Well, man, um, I feel like entertainment has been decentralized. Like, it's not all about Hollywood. Yeah. It's not all about L.A. You could be in Nashville and be funny. You know, you could be in Florida and be funny. Uh, You could podcast out of Texas. You could sell merch out of Chicago. I mean, you know, up until you have an unpopular opinion and somebody complains to a big tech company and says, is it this? Uh, Dear PayPal, do you know what Rob, the producer, has been saying? Ah, oh, shit. We have a petition here, and we think that he shouldn't be allowed to use PayPal. Yeah, it's probably good that I don't have a, a whole lot of eyes on me right now, because I would have been deplatformed years ago. <laughs> well, shit, I'm running the risk. To, I'm kidding. To, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm running the risk of losing uh, whatever it is we're trying to rebuild. I'm kidding. You know, yeah. what's funny is that when I started podcasting and I started helping, you know, everything from a nonprofit organization start their show to other creatives or businesses, it was all in the idea, and it's still the same thing, of empowering again. Mm-hmm. Inspiring, empowering, motivating. And like they say, you know, motivation's like baths. You know, you need it every day or oh. whatever. The, uh, otherwise, it's, you know, useless. Or I forgot how it goes, but think of it like that. Like motivation is, is required daily, such as a bath is. Like hygiene. Like hygiene. And, um, and here we are talking about serious subjects, but to a point too, and this is kind of how I look at politics, it's like sports, you know? It's kind of like you got your sports team and you're rooting for them and the players on that field. At the end of a sports, I know it gets intense during playoffs and all that shit, but you go to a game, and I forgot who was saying this, but they made it. They made a really good comparison as well to sports and, and politics. And it's like the game's over, you leave, you know, maybe your team lost, maybe your team won, but you're still grabbing beers at the bar, and you're having a good time, maybe you're talking shit about some of the plays and some of the people. And the same kind of thing I like into politics. Like, I can follow AOC and read her tweets or her tweets screenshotted on uh, Instagram the way I'll follow Dan Crenshaw and read his stuff. And man, is it, you know, one side versus the other. It's like polar opposite ideas. But I'm still going to consume it and just try to understand where that play was coming from or where that phrase was coming from or why they look at it that way. And I just encourage other people to do the same thing. Like, why wouldn't you want to see where an AOC from the Bronx or wherever she's from is, is coming from and then where Dan Crenshaw, Navy SEAL from Texas, is coming from? I think you'll gain a lot from that. Yeah, like speaking of teams and stuff like that, my wife was like, man... How did the Republicans allow the Democrats to just pull this pull this off where they have all the power, all the branches? Kamala will be the tiebreaker in the what the Senate. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Congress, you got the executive branch and and you got the mainstream media on their side and, you know, this and that. I was like, well, the way I broke it down, because I, maybe I was high at the time. Yeah, I was like, it's really not even about the Republicans and the Democrats. I was like, those are just jerseys that they're wearing on a field. You still have a larger thing going down besides the jerseys on the field. I was like, if anything, I was like, think of it as a 100 year war where you have leftist ideology that has been around probably since before Marx and Lenin and Stalin and Shea and Castro and Maduro, and Chavez, and all these people, those are extreme leftists. They're socialists, communists, etc. And the way I was explaining it to her was like, it's not even so much about the jerseys and the rep- Republicans versus the Democrats. I was like, it's, think of it as this idea virus that has been spreading its little tentacles. And it's a, it's a chess game where it's like, and now I control your media. And I just bought off another scientist and I have some journalists in my pocket and I have some spies sleeping with that congressperson. And they're just, oh, we got Disney on our side. Oh, we got your sports. We got NBA. We got a couple players over here. They're just moving pieces around. And it's like what you said. It's like Generation 5 warfare. Mm. It's ideology. It's tentacles. It's chess. It's economic it's globalist versus nationalist and in the mix we it's it's the citizens who 
We've been spoiled. We don't even... Some of this shit... I mean... These are... This terminology is it's new to me. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to sit up here and say, I'm an expert on Stalin and Marx, Karl Marx and Mao. And I, I can tell you right now how communism crept into Nicaragua. I can tell you right now how socialism and communism crept into Zimbabwe. I can tell you what happened in Ukraine. I'm not an expert on that, but I'm starting to see it as it's not black and white. It's nuanced. And Trump ain't even real, ain't even really a, a Republican all the way. And a lot of the Republicans don't even have his back. So is it really about re Republicans and Democrats? Or is it about ideas that are spreading like viruses? Like everything is racism. Everything is white supremacy. Everything is domestic terror. Like, damn, man, you, you just trying to just play us like that? You just putting it out there? Yeah, and that's that's kind of a good way to look at it too, as far as like Trump not being a Republican, because it you know the, there's there's these two factions, right? These two sides, but they have to work in a way that that things can pass, and and the, you know we can continue to get this wheel going down the road. And at the beginning of Trump's presidency, I want to say, or right like right around there, um, I think the Republicans had almost a super majority in all the House, the Senate. You know, they had the presidency, and they didn't really do a whole lot with it. And I hear people talking about that, and you could you could guess why. And and I guess at the end of the day, it's really the people on the right, the Republicans, the old establishment, went along with a lot of what the left wanted to just keep the program moving. Like let's just keep it going. Everybody's. People being fed, people making money, you know, Wall Street's great, blah, blah, blah. Let's just keep it business as usual. But the whole time... There was, there was no war. Yeah, it, it, but the whole time, the left, like, they're still enacting their plan. They're still planning to, you know, they want theirs. No they, mercy. Yeah, they don't want to play nice as much as the Republicans decided to just go with, with whatever, you know. They just And that's their fault. Like, that, you got to vote them out. If you don't want that anymore, you got to vote it out next time they come around. So the critique of the Republican, a lot of Republicans, is that they're soft. Yeah. And they don't fight back. Yeah. And that they should have been more aggressive in the beginning when Trump first went in mm -hmm. and did a whole thing about, yeah, let's start a special counsel to investigate Hillary right. and what happened. Mm -hmm. No, let, let's be for real about, because the, the left has never stopped on their throwing people in jail. Like, we're going to prosecute. We're going to, it's a 25th Amendment. We're going to impeach. It's like, this man got a week left. Yeah. Either, either he's going to resign or I don't know what, how quick y'all can get this impeachment going. But it's like, and again, it just kind of sets a precedence for like his um, whatever he's gonna look like in the history books. He'll be the first president to be impeached twice, basically, mm -hmm. is where you start. And it just kind of it'll just continue to overshadow any good, any any good, you know, bringing troops home, peace treaties, market was great. All that stuff is gonna get overshadowed by first president to be impeached twice, nearly you know convicted as well. He'll never get convicted. They'll never get two thirds of the vote to get him out. He's got eight, nine, whatever fucking days left. Like convicted. What do you mean? So in order to get impeached and actually removed from office, you know, Congress has to vote on. It and then the Senate, you have to get two thirds vote in order for the two sides to say, "Yeah, motherfucker, got to go." Because the, fir the first impeachment didn't really go through, right? No, he got impeached but not convicted. So in order for the impeachment to actually take place, you have to have the impeachment process from the House and then the conviction process to get him out of office. It's not going to happen. You're not going to get enough people in politics to so, vote for this guy. So they're going to impeach him the way they did the first time, yeah, which is technically on paper, yeah, but not being ousted and removed, yeah. yeah. Again, it's it's the wordplay. You see, taxpayer you see, dollars. Yeah, you see this in the headlines. You know, be impeached again. They're they're trying to you know vote for this. It'll be the first president in history to be impeached twice. With a lot of people not really understanding what what gets him out of that office. Just like the thing about uh, sixty cases, they lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. All the there obviously is no evidence. There's obviously no foul play because look, sixty cases, all of them lost. This one's going on YouTube. I'm just gonna warn you now with what you say. All right, because that is a hundred percent not allowed anymore. That part, what I just said. Yeah, you, you said you said we said cases, but we didn't uh, say what. You know. Okay, okay. Well, you can't use that term together. Mm. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to America, twenty twenty one. And I'm a comedian, and I'm an American, and I'm a freedom crusader. I'll put it that way, because I'm not a Donald Trump crusader. Yeah. That's how some people see me. I know. Yeah. They think, what is up with Chingo and his Donald Trump crusade? Let it go. How much longer? It's like, look, man, the clubs are closed. There ain't shit else to talk about. This is the most important thing, crack a lacking right now. Like freedom of speech, censorship, big tech. All right. Am I allowed to say that? 
Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, sure. It's, so far. Let's give the definition for, for people to have some context on Crusader, in case you don't know, because we think of me- medieval times, which is accurate, okay. but a person who campaigns vigorously for political, social, or religious change, a campaigner, I mean, what are we really campaigning or crusading for other than what we've been saying? Free speech, live your life, build your business, go to church, p- help me out here. What be else? Fr- be free, <laughs> get your money, uh, no war, good economy, uh, low unemployment, Good jobs, good education for your kids, safe communities. I don't want Antifa burning up my block. Yeah. Just like these mayors, just like Mayor Lightfoot says, y'all could protest and burn shit, but not on my block. Yeah, with her private security. Yeah. AOC wants to defund the police. She ain't finna defund hers. So, so again, what, what aren't we all crusading for all these liberties, civil liberties and freedoms? And the, the only reason I'm using the word crusader is because somebody called me that. Yeah. They were like chingo's all out trump crusade it's like no that's maybe how you see it yeah but you know i don't agree with everything he does it's just that when i threw my hat into the world of political discussion it began with ladies and gentlemen i voted for donald trump i know a lot of y'all ain't gonna understand why a lot of y'all probably ain't gonna want to hear why a lot of y'all are gonna hate me from now on but i'm not gonna sit here and regurgitate everything all these folks on the left are promoting. I can't stand by a whole bunch of burning, looting, riots and shit. I can't stand by that. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of the lockdowns. Um, I mean, hey, call me crazy. But that's kind of where I stand. I'm not extreme on either side. I'm not cuckoo. I'm not on drugs. Maybe I'm a little bit cuckoo in some ways. You know, I'm a comedian. <laughs> yeah, I'm a comedian. Aren't all, aren't all entertainers a little bit? Yeah, I mean, think about it. What's my business plan? Make TikToks. <laughs> That's not a business plan. You know, somebody that uses, I remember early on in the episodes, we were talking about people that use the word denounce without, you know, like you could tell how, you know, people were outside of their box of knowledge when they were like, Jingo Bling denounces, you know, his rasa or whatever. Similar to somebody who might use the word crusade. Like I, you could tell somebody that, that uses denounce and crusader and these you know, really buzzwordy type of words have very social dust justice uh ideas that maybe have had a lot of attention on them lately and to see trump as somebody who doesn't want these you know social justice type of uh i don't know even though I, he's had like the most gay people in his cabinet black the, people the first president to come in uh where it's already a uh, same-sex marriage is already allowed yeah. obama had to do it in his second term he had to think about it for four years mm-hmm. um but again people that see Trump and my support and why I voted for him, they see it as chingo. You may want to distance yourself from this guy because he's toxic. It's negative. It's this, it's that, you know, he's toxic. It's bad. It's negative. He's the one he's been dividing us. He's the one really. Cause the way I see it, it's the media been doing all that shit. And the people's interpretation, like we can't let, we just can't give everybody a free pass of it too. Like if you read it and it heats you up and it gets you, you know, all hot and bothered on the inside, it's because your interpretation of it is not to say skewed or wrong, but it is, it's elevated. You got to figure out why it's so elevated. When somebody tells me that they are offended at something I say, it's typically something really stupid, like it was a joke or whatever, right? And my only response has to be, well, I'm offended that you're offended because that's how much I really think that matters. How many conversations have had to end with, let's just agree to disagree? Yeah. Because I don't, I don't block people I, I'm cool with. And I'm probably still cool with them. Yeah. From my perspective. It's just I don't want to log on every day and see you being a smartass yeah. on my thing. Yeah. Like, where's your red pill lord? <laughs> da, 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 da. Lord? What do you mean? Who are you talking about? Trump? Red pill lord? So, you know, people that insinuate that I don't read. Or people that insinuate that, you know, their version of the truth is the only truth and everything that disagrees is wrong. And um, that that's the world we live in, man. It is. And, and the, the agree to disagree is something that, you know, is is as old as time. People have said that. And I think everyone understands what that means when you're talking to somebody like, ah, let's just agree to disagree. I think we're coming upon a time, though, where because of the stakes and the heights and the level of where everything is, is at, it's literally at a death con nine right now for everyone. 
that phrase is going to not really be applicable anymore. It's not going to be let's agree to disagree. It's going to be let's agree to let live in our own worlds because I clearly can't see what you're saying and you don't want to see what I'm saying. Especially since they're promoting this idea of there is two Americas. Right, especially with that. There are two judicial systems, Rob. And it's like, yeah, I think you're right because they actually arrested some of these people that stormed in the Capitol. Yeah. You know, the feds is on their ass, which they should be, as they should. Meanwhile, three months worth. I mean, do we really want to compare? Do we really want to have a list side by side of how much damage was done at the Capitol? Obviously, you're not supposed to storm federal buildings with Congress people in there. But do y'all really want to go down that road where it's like you adding up all the lives, you know, from David Dorn on down to how many buildings, how economic impact of your chaz and your chop. Are y'all ready to have that discussion? Or y'all want to continue to be blind and be like, Chingo's mean, Chingo's closed-minded, Chingo really doesn't want a discussion. No, we have disavowed violence and rioting and burning across the board. We never was talking about, yeah, that's good, they went up in there and broke some windows. No, but... People turn a blind eye. The mainstream media, politicians, and the general public really believe that all them folks over there in D.C. had white privilege, that all that was domestic terrorism, all of it, not just the few handful of bad apples. They're like, no, all of it. Anyone who has ever worn a red hat, anyone who voted for Trump, like, whoa, 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 whoa. You lumping up half the country, son? (laughs) Fuck out of here. With that said, I'm actually kind of glad we didn't get to our, our note sheet uh, mm-hmm. or all of it because we'll save it for the Patreon episode so we can go uh, full on on those bottom topics, as you can see, the way, uh-huh. I, <laughs> the way I labeled it. Oh, uh, yeah. Because um, we've got a Her Lounge podcast coming up, Money Souls podcast. If you guys want to listen to that, subscribe to Her Lounge. Um, what are we leaving with this week? Or well, not this week, but today. Patreons, obviously tomorrow. You're going out of town. Tickets at ChingleBling.com. Tickets at ChingleBling.com, man. We're, uh, we're getting the tour. Uh, College Station tickets are doing really well. Um, Because sometimes, man, I lose faith in the future of live entertainment. Mm -hmm. I really do, because we're at the mercy of politicians and how they interpret data. They don't really tell us why there has to be a curfew. They don't really tell us why you can't eat here, but you can eat there, and why you can shop there, but you can't shop here. So I'm not always very optimistic about touring in 2021. But a buddy of mine said, Chingo, when the shit opens up, people are going to have an appetite to get out there and laugh. So hopefully, uh, you know, there's no more strains and mutations and and governmental shutdowns and so on and so forth. Uh, So we're going to make it do what it do. Thank you guys to all the patrons that uh, um, thank you for shit. I just want to thank America and my freedom of speech and the little bit that I do have left. So remember, I pledge allegiance to the official narrative. I will not question, criticize, critique. I will not raise any, you know, I, I, I won't. Everything's okay. We're not, we're not questioning anything. We're going with the official narrative. <laughs> Amen and a one. 88 patrons, by the way, 88 patrons and counting. Uh, it's continuing to go up every day. We appreciate you guys. You guys are really making the uh, premium content awesome. Uh, all the input, all the things you guys send. I see it, the comments on the social media. It's awesome. Subscribe to the YouTube and uh, please help share those clips. I predict that all we need is one of them clips to go viral. I I was hoping it was the Cardi B one, but that didn't do shit. I was hoping. A lot of people tag her. Why don't you tag her, bro? Why don't you tag her? I'll tag her for you. All right, thanks. Thanks, bro. Uh, But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, Always lots to talk about. Hopefully, I don't have to be in defense mode every episode explaining, justifying, um, you know, that's why I wanted to start off with stuff we can all agree upon. Um, none of it is outlandish. None of it's unrealistic. Uh, and just remind you guys that our goal is to just educate, you know, not, not I want to use the word educate because then people take it as you're calling me dumb. Inform. We just want to empower you because these politicians have taken advantage of us because they keep us at a minimal level of understanding. The more we understand the more engaged and involved we could be and they won't take advantage of us as easy because we'll know the terminology and we'll know the historical context and we'll understand the repercussions 
of deplatforming people and censoring people and using your big tech muscle to shut people up. So with that being said, stay free and I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.